This is not supposed to be like this. It can't be 50 years. I can't feel this so strong. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. supposed to be over it. We thought we were going to school. We did not know that we were going to run headlong into the American white supremacist, black hating people. This is Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. The time is two hours before classes commence on the first day of the autumn term. The National Guard is standing by at every entrance to the high school because the integration question is now facing the citizens of this southern community for the first time. A crowd of several hundred people gathered across the street from the high school for all people who favor segregation, oppose the beginning of integration. First of all, I'd like to say, sir, it has been the pattern of life from time immemorial. I am for segregation because it's biblical. The colored people here in the South have got better schools than some of the white kids like it is. Let them go to their own school. Several hundred National Guardsmen and state troopers, armed with anti-riot equipment, are standing by on the order of Governor Orville Forbes. It will not be possible to restore or to maintain order and protect the lives and property of the citizens if forcible integration is carried out tomorrow in the schools of this community. Can you tell me your name, please? Are you going to go to school here at uh, Central High? You don't care to say anything, is that right? This girl here was the first Negro, apparently, of high school age to show up at Central High School the day that the federal court ordered it integrated. She was followed in front of the school by an angry crowd, many of them shouting epithets at her. An extreme situation has been created in Little Rock. This morning, the mob again gathered in front of the Central High School of Little Rock for the purpose of again preventing the admission of Negro children to that school. Mob rule can not be allowed to override the decisions of our courts. This is Central High School, morning that the colored students are expected to return back to school, this time under the protection of the 101st Airborne Division. The serious moment is when we get out of the car and we're surrounded by the soldiers. And that was something that I'll never forget that. I didn't care courts, I didn't care soldiers, I didn't care presidents, governors. I decided that I would get in that school. Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. The colored students are in. They're going to spend a full day in there now in integrated classes.
Hey, dog, you didn't whistle too loud. Good morning, Little Rock Central High School. As we move along with our Black History Month, I would like to propose something that we are going to try to do today and Monday. I want to do mix-up day. I have observed, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how all of you sit with your friends whom you've been with, some of you, since uh, elementary school. And I would like to propose that you find other people who are different from you to sit with today and Monday. I think that's going to be fun. The uh, quote for the day from Jesse Owens, Olympic track star is, find the good, it's all around you. Find it, showcase it, and you'll start believing in it. Have a really great day at Little Rock Central High School. Thank you. Is anybody at this table making a new friend at lunch today? Y'all are already friends. Y'all, the idea is this. You all segregate yourselves at lunch. I know you don't segregate yourself on purpose because I mean, you, you don't, don't like... like sitting inside the cafeteria. Well, but my point is, we have such diversity here. I want you to branch out and connect with different people in our school because I think that's part of the beauty of going to this historic school. Central High School has the very lowest socioeconomic children in Little Rock here, as well as the very top, and tends to be black and white. Central High School winner, best public school, Arkansas Times. Frankly, we win every year for both newspapers for best high school, and it's, it is it, it, it is with great pride that we accept these awards. It's also a problem in some ways because the other high schools are somewhat jealous of us. Well, I'm Floyd uh, Smith. I'm on the security outfit at uh, Central High School. Most of the, the poorest kids, most of them ride the buses here. And you can see the different makeup. It's going to be majority black. A lot of these kids have seen people murder. They saw people get the car jacked. They saw their friend get beat up. I mean, some of the parents on dope or whatnot. Your car is so freaking nice. I cannot believe But a, a big majority of the, the white student. Uh, most of them are from uh, the rich part of uh, Little Rock. Their parents is uh, very well off. This is the sophomore and junior lots down here. And most kids, when they turn 16, they start driving because the bus takes forever and stuff. This is my car. We're getting ready to go home. And I'm taking my little brother, too. He's a, so a freshman, so I didn't get to drive yet. He turned 16 about a year. Central does have a really outstanding reputation. Every year, Central produces like probably the most National Merit Scholars in Little Rock. When the colleges are reviewing your applications and they see that you attend Central, it definitely stands out. We live uh, in an area called The Heights. The Heights has a reputation for just being a safe neighborhood and a good part of town and it's really old traditional style houses. And this is my house right here. This is my mom, Laura Ramos. She volunteers in the office and is a part of the PTA. Education is very important to, to um, my husband and me. This is my oldest child, Mark, who graduated from Central last May. And uh, he is now at Princeton University, a freshman there, and really likes it. And he has felt like he's really well prepared for it, too. If you look at where the graduates go from Central, it is amazing the different schools. There are so many from the I that are in the Ivy Leagues. Last year they have something called Early Action at Yale and three of the kids that applied Early Action, all three got accepted. Ellen might not like my saying all this, but she's never made a B for a semester since she's been there and taken a lot of AP classes. And that's what it takes to graduate at the top of the class. There's plenty of people there who could afford to go to private school. But I mean, you don't really like think about that when you go to public school or anything. You just, you know, get along with who has good personalities and stuff, not where they live and everything. And, of course, it's about to be the 50-year the anniversary of the desegregation, and, 
There's, there's people that could easily afford to be in, in private school, but again, they really, you know, they, they're, they're looking for what the public school has to offer, which is diversity. 50 years ago, who would have ever thought? We are going to the Central High PTSA meeting and the PTSA is Parent Teacher Student Association, and they're usually at noon. I'm very fortunate that I, um, I stay at home with my kids, and so, you know, I can volunteer at school and be there. And there are lots of parents whose jobs won't permit it and uh, other constraints and maybe more kids at home and that kind of thing. And I hate that for them. I feel like studies have been done over and over that have shown that when parents are involved in a school, kids are going to be more successful. <laughs> the correlation between family support and a child's academic success, it's amazing. Our kids mirror what their parents do. I mean, look at our communities, look at our neighborhoods. When was the last time that you had dinner or spent an evening with somebody out of your social group? Well. We are continuing in our effort at Little Rock Central High School to pull more, more of our minority students into our upper level classes. You know, is it perfect? No, but we've come a long way too. And that's what I continue to tell people um, all the time, <laughs> is that we're working on things here. I think that for a very long time that the desegregation in 1957 was a black eye on Little Rock. And people thought of Little Rock as being somewhat racist when I think that that's not at all true. But I do think that she's right, you know, talking about the things that you, dinner on a Saturday night or church on Sunday morning, who are you with? And probably most of us are with people that live in our neighborhood and, you know, are, are a whole lot like us. There's just always areas of improvement that need to be made. And Mrs. Rousseau know what's, knows what needs to be done. And, they're just doing the best they can to see that it is happening. Tonight, I get sworn in as student body president here at Central. Uh, being a black student, it means something because what happened 50 years ago, you always have to think about it. I mean, it's something that you think about every day because these are the same steps that almost 50 years ago you know, they wouldn't let the black students in. You know, the National Guard had to escort everybody in. These same steps, the very doors. It's a big deal. Mr. President! At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Brandon Love to come forward, please. I will faithfully strive to execute the duties of the Office of President of Little Rock Central High School. Congratulations, Mr. President. We are very, very proud of our legacy at Little Rock Central High School. I hope by now everyone has heard um, that Newsweek has placed us 20th in the United States. Um, This distinction is based on the number of advanced placement exams that our students take at our school. But I want you to know that of all the schools in the state of Arkansas, we have the most uh, advanced placement scholars overall for students for their performance on these exams. We keep getting more and more awards for our school, more and more colleges and universities honoring our students. So we're very proud. school. If you ask the white teacher that, I bet you nine out of ten times that they're going to say, oh, Central is just, we're just everything. Everything is wonderful here. All of our kids are learning and all the kids, you know, and they have no reality. They're, if you're living in an AP world, 
or advanced placement world, you are out of reality when it comes to students in this school. Say, Mama, bye. Bye, Mama. Mama, help me get in the car. Every morning, my mom takes the kids to school. I get them ready every morning, but she's always the one that has to drive them to school since I don't have a license yet. These are all my trophies. Before I had kids, I, I was just continually on the road. I played for a softball team, and we went everywhere, and that's why I got all these trophies. We used to always win, and once I had kids, of course, I couldn't travel and I couldn't be gone for long periods of time. And so the trophies just stopped coming. This is my sister, Tina. <laughs> she has a son also, four year old. I went to school every day pregnant, walking up and down central steps in the 11th grade. You see a lot of single parents, especially at Central. A lot of people got kids up there. I know it's going to be tough trying to go to college and better myself. And it's going to be double on her because she's got two and I only got one. <laughs> it's going to be double. Yep. I usually leave the TV on so people think it's somebody here. So they don't be trying to break in because <laughs> a bunch of crack kids are out here. I live close to Central. We live by this cafe that should be knocked down, but they won't. And it's always crackheads coming in and out of there. And that's why we don't really be outside or nothing. Stay in the house, away from everything and everybody. You just gotta watch yourself a lot. I'm running a little late for school this morning. It happens a lot. <sighs> Sit down, please. Sit down where you belong. Am I going to have to send you out? Omar, get your book and sit down. And put that comb away where it's mine. This is called the Scholastic Read 180 program for struggling readers. These kids are very often behavioral problems, partly because they know they should be doing better. They feel badly about themselves. And so rather than admit, I don't know how to do this, they want attention. They'll cause problems. But this was the population in the school that really needs extra help. Come on, guys. Let's move it. Shh. Just go. Hillary, come and sit down, please. Omar, get at the computer. Guys, don't make me have to repeat this. Let's go, please. You know what you have to do. Hillary, come to the table. Let's review. Do you have your notebooks? Where are your pencils? Pens. You've got to have your notes. Bring your notes. Get them quickly. Bring them. Or get a sheet of paper and do them now if you don't have them. Do you have some paper? Yes, I have some paper. But guys, this is your responsibility. Let's go. Hurry up, Tremaine. Thank you. Come sit down with us, please. We're going to do Act 3, Scene 5, but let's talk about the dramatic irony and paraphrasing on 162 first. In, in Romeo and Juliet, the irony of the, of the play is that the audience knows things. We know things that the characters in the play don't know. That makes for dramatic irony. What is irony? That's a word. Irony. Yeah. What is it? Uh, what is ironic? Uh, no. Okay, paraphrasing. What is paraphrasing? Uh, 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 if you paraphrase something, the wrong words. this uh, is a reading skill that we really have to build up, okay? I'm going to have to finish another day, guys. This We ran out of a little bit of time. We'll finish tomorrow. Keelan, behave the rest of the day. Don't get yourself in trouble. 
problems. It's the young black males that we're having the biggest problem with. They're interested in other things besides reading. So it bothers me that this class is a lot male and almost all African American. But that's the elephant in the room. You can't ignore it. Uh, I wanted to focus today on concluding the war and then also talking a little bit about Vietnam after the fact. Remember the term Vietnamization of the war meant this. Nixon's policy of trying to turn the war back over to the, Viet the South Vietnamese forces and to extricate U.S. forces from the region. Central's racial breakdown is probably 60 percent or approaching 60 percent African American and it doesn't come anywhere close to that in my classes. My three African American young women uh, sit boom, boom, and boom right there next to one another. They feel like they kind of need to be together. But you know, they're by far the minorities in a school in which they're not the minority.